Peggy Seek is I'm Nick. Along with the RTX 3080 Ti announcement last week, Nvidia also took the wraps off the 3070 Ti as well. I think the 3070 Ti came as more of a surprise than the 3080 Ti given that's what most people thought they wanted to buy. But with the continuing silicon shortage and the drought in Taiwan impacting production, it's almost safe to say that the availability of the 3070 Ti and the rest of the 30 series GPUs will share the same fate. Now I've talked about availability to death and nothing I can say in these videos is gonna fix the availability. With that said, Nvidia sent over one of their 3070 Ti Founders editions for us to check out. So we did what we usually do and run it through our regular suite of Linux and Windows benchmarks. As I mentioned in the intro, I've got no idea about availability or whether or not you're gonna be able to buy these cards anytime soon or at launch, but the launch date is right now. But I really have to stress that all of this, again, is subject to availability. Yep, I sound like a broken record, but this is the way it's gonna be well into 2022. Now this video, as with most of our GPU videos, there's a lot of data to unpack. There's chapters in all of our videos, so if you wanna to jump to a certain section of a video, you can use your mouse or your finger and check out the progress bar. And yeah, there's timestamps in the description if you don't wanna do it that way. Also, make sure you watch the whole video to see what I'm trying to say and to get the context of this video. These are the out of the box figures only and we're not covering overclocking in this video. We probably will with the AIB cards because I've got a few things I wanna test out. Let's get the benchmarks and comparisons out of the way. These graphs are weighted based on the performance of the cards that we're not focusing on from our entire database. We use our regular test bench for all of these tests to give you guys accurate results based on that testing hardware. We always use the same hardware so there's no variations anywhere in our testing. All right, let's kick it off with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. You can use that magic little pause button at any time during the video if you wanna take a look at these graphs for a bit longer. The first thing you're probably noticing even with this 1080p benchmark is that the 3070 Ti is slightly faster than the 3070 and sits between the 3080 and 3070 in most tests. And this is gonna be the trend that you're gonna see across this whole video. When we compare Windows to Linux, we're seeing that the Linux performance is slightly better than Windows and with Vulkan versus VX12. This is usually the case and you're gonna be seeing this with other cards in this graph as well. At 1440p, we're seeing a small uplift compared to the 3070. It's enough for it to be considered faster. The 3070 really went toe to toe with the 2080 Ti, but the 3070 Ti widens that margin. At 1440p in Linux, the 3070 Ti is faster than 3070 by a significant margin of around 12 FPS. In Windows at 4K, it pulls ahead of the 2080 Ti again. However, in Linux at 4K, they share the same performance. All right, let's move on to Unige and Superposition. For these Superposition tests, we performed three tests in total, 4K optimized, 1080p extreme, and a custom 1440p preset with depth of field and motion blur turned off. We sometimes get comments along the lines of us using the stock OpenGL implementation versus DX11 for comparison. We're only comparing the out of the box experience only. The API here does not matter. It's about the best case scenario, not the API being used. First up with the 1080p Extreme benchmark, this one is highly GPU bound and we're seeing the 3070 Ti slightly outpace the 3070. In Linux with OpenGL, it never performs as well as Windows. That's just how it is in Linux regardless of the kernel, the driver or the distro being used. And with the 3070 Ti, we saw it outpace the 3070. At 1440p in Windows, the 3070 Ti is slightly faster than the 6800 XT. In Linux, the 3070 Ti easily outpaces both the 2080 Ti and the 3070. At 4K in Windows, it's going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the 6900 XT and easily outpacing the 3070. 
In Linux at 4K, the 3070 Ti equals both the 2080 Ti in performance and beats the 3070 by a few frames. Next up is Basemark GPU. Basemark gives us a great indication of Vulkan performance in both Windows and in Linux. At 1080p, we're seeing the 3070 Ti performing quite well against the rest of the field. In Linux, we're seeing the same thing happening at 1080p with it pulling ahead of most of the other GPUs but sitting quite far behind the 3080. At 1440p in Windows, it shows the 3070 Ti outpacing the 6800 XT by quite a margin. In Linux though, the gap between the two is not quite as large, only being around 3 FPS different. And finally at 4K, we're seeing the same thing being echoed in both Windows and in Linux. We ran a one hour stress test in Ida64 and we couldn't get the 3070 Ti above 72 degrees in our 18 degree climate controlled office. Be aware that we're running on an open air test bench. The results in a closed system will be far different from what we observed. We include this result because our open air test environment is consistent and this is how we test every single GPU. Nothing ever changes. As far as power consumption, we observed it hitting a board power draw maxing out at around 289 watts of full load over a period of one hour. That's what I expected from this card given the power draw is actually 290 watts. So one watt here and there, not too big of a deal. We also observed the 3070 Ti to be audible in our stress testing period. Again, we run an open air test system and I say this in every video, you're probably not going to hear this GPU when it's in a closed system. Now, these acoustic observations make way more sense for a normal user because most of the time when you see numbers in videos about GPUs and, and coolers and how loud they are or how not loud they are, they just don't make sense. These acoustics are only tangible if something is sitting next to you, otherwise it just doesn't make much sense. It's a relatively short two slot card. It's got a new cooler design than that we saw with any of the other 30 series cards. I think the 3070 Ti is the only one that shares this design. The 3070 had like two fans on one side and whatnot. And design wise, I actually don't hate this. I actually quite like it, but the design of something like this only goes so far when you're not gonna be able to buy this GPU, and I know I'm sounding like a broken record again, but the 3070 Ti seems to be a bit more compelling than the 3080 Ti with its launch and its expected MSRP, but again, you're probably not gonna be able to buy this card at all. I could whinge and complain about the availability like I did in the 3080 Ti video, which you can check out in the top right hand corner right now, but I'm tired of doing that. I'm worn out from talking about all that stuff. You just can't buy this stuff. And honestly, along with the other tech content creators, we're feeling pretty defeated with all this GPU stuff to the point where it's impacting most of our mental health. We can only say so much about hardware before it starts to become futile. I'm honestly hoping that people will be able to buy these at a decent price and it seems like the CPU market has finally bounced back, but I don't have a lot of faith with these GPUs. This card is another cash grab, although less of a cash grab. So is the 3080 Ti. And that's a fact. As far as pricing, the NVIDIA RTX 3070 Ti founders will be going for around 599 US dollars at the time of filming. Obviously, <laughs> subject to availability, which has just become a joke. In Australia, the founders cards usually have zero availability regardless of a silicon shortage. And we've got no idea if you're gonna be able to get any of these cards at launch. And yeah, if you can get them full close to MSRP, I would say given the market, I would absolutely snap this card up. The performance isn't too bad. The MSRP does appear to be okay, but you know how that goes already, right? The AIB versions will be priced way higher than these founders cards. And given what we've seen with basically every other GPU on the market at the moment, yeah, that's just how it is. That said, we do have a few other 3070 Ti AIB cards and we're gonna check them out. And the only reason why I'm gonna be doing videos about those cards is because it's about the price. I wanna see if they're gonna be decent, if they're gonna be worth it, and I'm curious to see if 
yeah, if it all lines up. Let us know what you guys think about the 3070 Ti. I honestly, again, I just don't feel comfortable about talking about the GPUs, but we're gonna continue to cover them because I have faith that one day soon, the prices will come down and you'll be able to find this video helpful at some time. Now, again, like I already said, the CPU pricing has bounced back. But yeah, let's cross our fingers and hope we can get some relief for this GPU pricing soon. The current global climate has just made it, ex it's made it impossible to get excited about new tech. And again, I sound like a broken record and I just keep repeating myself. But as much as I hate complaining about this and my complaints are not going to fix anything, I need this to be off my chest because I, I'm feeling the same frustration as you guys. You can bet your bottom dollar that we're gonna be giving away all of our cards so they can be in the hands of gamers everywhere. If you guys like this video, please like and subscribe. Make sure you check out the kernel control video. That's got more Linux stuff. Or if you're watching this on kernel control, you've already seen it. Yeah, um, you guys are awesome. Thanks for supporting us through this incredibly weird time in tech. If you like the video, you know what to do. Like the video with the button that hits the like, the thumb up. If you hated the video, hit the dislike button twice. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers and your boy Nick with Kernel Control, I suppose. It's gonna be the same video, but not really. Thanks for watching. You peak, we seek, and yeah. I don't have one for Kernel Control yet. Again, thank you. Appreciate you all very much. And I'm gonna film more cats. So we're just gonna put more cats in the videos, right, right Claire? Yeah. More cats in videos. Yeah. yeah. Alright. See you guys later.